Hey there everybody, welcome to Tuk Tuk's Trinkets and Terrain. After my last graphic video, the Yawning Portal, I decided I wanted to do something more organic, freeform, and, and natural. Uh, and somehow I landed on using a skull. Um, I've had these floating around for a while now, but I thought it would be cool to turn this into a, a cave entrance, sort of like Aladdin's Cave of Wonders. Um, so this is just simple foam, so I figured it'd be nice and easy to work with. Um, end product ended up really cool looking I'm really proud of it at the end of the video I'm going to announce the winner of my subscriber giveaway so make sure you stay tuned for that uh, but before we do let's get into the build thanks so much for stopping by I hope you enjoy all right so we got a bit of a different camera angle this week hopefully this works out better I know it was a lot easier to film but this is the skull as you can see it's uh, expanded polystyrene just sort of normal styrofoam first thing I had to do was cut away the jaw because uh, I wanted to make an opening for the cave entrance so I wanted to be able to reposition it however I needed to I just used my cheapo hot wire knife to cut it away uh, after that, I cut away a section of the back of the skull so it laid flatter onto the surface. The, the roundness of the skull made it look kind of awkward and making it flat would um, prevent me from having to use a lot of material to bulk it out and uh, make it flush with whatever base I ended up using. After that, I realized that I didn't do sharp enough of an angle to tilt the skull up enough to create an opening. I cut off another section of the skull towards the back so that it could tilt upwards. Uh, you can see here I'm just kind of messing with it to get an idea of what I wanted to do. And then just cut the jaw into a couple different pieces to create the opening for the cave. Next up I wanted to create uh, somewhat of a texture on the skull itself. So using my knife here I just sort of picked away at chunks of the skull uh, to give it more of a rough surface. Uh, give it some interest instead of just this sort of perfectly smooth skull. Just picking at spots randomly and, and tearing away chunks. Did the same on the jaw pieces to get rid of all the sharp corners. Uh, this is what I'm going to use for the base. This is that exercise mat that I used in my Yawning Portal video, uh, which is EVA foam, I have since learned. So I just cut it out and beveled it. And you see here, I wanted to create a depression uh, like the cave is going down into the ground. So I measured it out with the skull, used a sharpie to mark it off, and then I just used a X-Acto knife to cut away the section in the uh, base. I tried my best not to tear away completely through the material, but I ended up just giving up and just tore through it. Uh, you can see here that that will be positioned right where the opening of the cave is going to be, which will give it some, give it a nice ramp down into the cave. Uh, next up, I covered the hole as well as stiffened up the board with this unnamed cereal box material. Uh, this I ended up tearing away further down the road. It ended up being too thick and made the lip of the EVA foam too high off the ground. So I tore that away and used the thinner piece of paper. Uh, next up, I wanted to make a more of a uh, smoother transition between the sort of base layer and then the lower layer where the cave entrance is. So I thought the best way to do that would just be an open flame. It gives it a nice rounded edge, more of a gradual slope that you can see here. I uh, then hot glued the skull on into place over the, the hole and then glued the jaw pieces into place to create the sort of base structure for the cave entrance. Next, I wanted to bulk out some of the areas as well as smooth the transition between the what would become the ground and the skull itself. Uh, and I figured aluminum foil would be the cheapest and easiest way to do that. Uh, so just use some hot glue to attach bits of aluminum foil wherever I thought it needed to be. This helped cover up some of the weird gaps where the jaw was glued in place, as well as create a somewhat of a transition. Fortunately, I ran out of aluminum foil somehow, so I didn't get to finish, but I fixed it in the next couple of steps. You can see the big gap there between the left jaw and the floor, but that's okay. Now to create texture all over this skull, I wanted to make it look like a big stone, essentially. I used some wall joint compound and just smeared it all over everything. Just used a popsicle stick and tried to make uh, some nice textures, fill in all the weird gaps, uh, essentially just cover everything. 
This would not only protect the styrofoam, but would also give it a nice rocky texture. Here it is all dried. You can see there's a bunch of really great uh, texture. Uh, I then grabbed some scrap pieces of foam and just made some simple rock shapes. Uh, nothing too fancy here, just carved away at them, tore pieces off until I got some rough stone shapes. And I'm just gonna glue these on randomly around the skull to break up the base. Uh, just give it a little more visual interest. And then once those were all in place, I spread some white glue all over the base, spread it out with a paintbrush, and then I used my sand and rock mixture to uh, base everything. This is a really simple, just essentially small pebbles, medium pebbles and larger rocks uh, that I used for my ground texture. So as this was drying, I didn't really like how uniform the top of the skull was. My attempts earlier to roughen it up were not dramatic enough, so I really just went for it and dug out some really deep recesses into the skull and the styrofoam to just make it more varied, more textured, uh, make it look a little more like a natural rock, even though obviously it's not, because it is clearly a skull shape. I still want it to keep that skull shape, but I still want it to be a little closer to natural than just the pure spherical uh, backside of the skull. Uh, and then with all the exposed foam, I filled those in with some more joint compound and set that aside to dry. Now after coating everything in some black paint and Mod Podge to seal in all of the sand and rocks, I decided that I wanted to paint the skull sort of an odd color. So I base coated it in just a brown uh, as well as a few of the rocks. I painted brown as well. I then painted the remaining stones, this pewter gray, for their base coat. Again, just to give more variation uh, so that everything's not uniform. And then for the ground, I used this burnt umber color. This is a darker brown, just to differentiate it from the brown of the stones. So for my overbrush slash dry brush steps, I used this wine color on all of the brown stones. Uh, this is just a dark red. I really like this. Uh, specifically for my desert terrain that I've made, but I figured this would be a cool sort of different color for the skull. Uh, and then for the gray stones, I use this pewter gray for their, for their dry brush. And then I sort of hit the skull in random spots. Uh, and then for the ground, I use the country twill, sort of a tan color. And then again, just sort of randomly hit the rest of the stones with this for more color variation. I then picked out a few of the larger stones that were glued on with just the same pewter gray as the larger stones just to the break up the brown areas. Uh, I then took this hunter green and sort of randomly hit areas of the ground. Uh, I knew I wanted to add a bunch of foliage to this so this would help with that down the road. You see here everything's all finished in terms of the overbrush dry brush stage. Uh, I then coated everything with my homemade black wash. This is a super simple black paint, brown paint, uh, dishwasher, rinse aid, and then a whole bunch of water. Nothing fancy, but it does the job, and I really like the effect. And once that was dry, I hit everything with this sand gray dry brush to bring out all of the texture and hit all the uh, high areas. With everything all painted, I mixed up a few static grasses that I have to create this sort of yellowish green grass, painted on some PVA glue, and applied that grass to those glue areas, including the eyes, just to make them pop more. Uh, and then next was the fun part. I gathered up every foliage plant material that I had on hand and just started gluing stuff down. I clipped off small little branches from uh, dollar store plants, glued those in clumps. Uh, I then made these smaller sort of plants with this little flower bit in the middle. Uh, I just glued this onto the mat here so it was a little easier to control. And then I just scraped that off with a knife and then glued those into place around the base. Again, just adding more plants. Uh, I had a couple of these large pink flowers that I thought would look good on the eye. Uh, had these taller ones that I glued as sort of like tall spindly plants. Uh, and these trees I bought off of Amazon a pretty long time ago. They're, they're advertised as model train trees, but the quality is admittedly pretty low, um, but the price was also very low, so get what you pay for, but I'm happy with them. So I picked a few of those out, 
uh, bored a few holes into the base and then just use some hot glue to stick those in. Uh, and then I grabbed some clump foliage. You can see that this is sort of a yellow and dark green mixed together. And I use this to cover up all of the exposed hot glue on everything. Uh, and then to add some color, I use some flower tufts and some of these grass tufts that are a bit of a different color. Stuck those around all over the place. I also grabbed this dried leaf scatter foliage stuff that I bought uh, a while ago when I was resupplying my static grass. Uh, I don't normally buy stuff like this because I would prefer to make it myself, but past experiences have taught me that it's too difficult or, or takes too much time to make this sort of thing. So I bought these and scattered them around just using some white glue. I then grabbed some moss and just dipped that in the same white glue and glued that all over the rock. Uh, and I ran into a problem here. I was getting all ready to film the sort of vanity shots, and I realized that it did a very poor job on the inside of the cave. You can see that it's not painted well. There's static grass all stuck up in there. And uh, my wife had the wonderful idea of making sort of a vine wall that you would have to walk through and push aside to get inside. And I thought that was really cool. So I glued some moss to the front, used some scissors to uh, trim away the excess and with that everything is all done. So this was our before shot with just a plain skull and here it is all complete. Uh, I really love all of the different colors of foliage and plants. Uh, it adds a really cool look to the table. Uh, the texture of the joint compound gives it an awesome rocky look. Plus the grayness of the normal stones make the reddish brown stone of the skull really stand out in contrast which I really like. Here's the cave in context with some other terrain. I sort of set up a green dragon layer in the forest uh, along a cliffside. Uh, it adds a, a nice lush look to the forest. You probably recognize some black magic craft trees in there with the scrubbing pads which are one of my favorites. So that's my skull cave. Um, really happy with how it turned out. I got to use a bunch of vegetation, which is always fun. Use a few things that I haven't used yet. Uh, so yeah, I'm really happy with the final result. But as far as the giveaway is concerned, I ran that over on my Instagram account, uh, which you can check out via the link in the description if you're interested. I post work of progress pictures, other things that I'm not necessarily doing videos on, things like that. Uh, but the winner of the giveaway was randomly selected from the comments on the post associated with the giveaway. And the winner was Alan Sinnott 2020. So congratulations to them. Uh, thank you everybody who entered. I really appreciate it. Uh, but they are going to get a few um, dungeon tiles, one of our googly eye acid bubble pools that we made in a previous video, uh, a set of doors. Um, if you are interested in any of this, I do sell all this in my Etsy shop. All this is made by me. So if you're interested in getting a few random scatter terrain or tiles, you can check that out. Link for that is also in the description. Uh, and the last thing that I'll be sending to the winner is a set of dice so they can uh, add to their collection. Uh, but like I said, thank you so much for everybody who entered. I'm gonna be sending that stuff out to the winner shortly. I wanna keep doing giveaways. Um, I think it's a really fun form of engagement for, um, for everybody. Uh, so I guess the next milestone is a thousand. Again, a lot more subscribers than I was anticipating. So. When we get to a thousand subscribers, we'll do a, a bigger, more extravagant giveaway, I guess. Uh, so make sure you subscribe, leave a comment, hit the like button, share with your friends, all that good YouTube stuff. Uh, but like always, more than anything, I really appreciate you watching the video, checking it out, and I hope to see you next time.